Hello and welcome back to the Soil Health Assessment video series. I'm Brian Doherty, Ag Engineering Field Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. And today I'm going to talk about doing a visual assessment for soil aggregation. So I'm going to do what's called a spade test, which is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to dig up some soil from a few different places here with the spade. And then we'll take a look at the aggregation and a few other soil characteristics as well. So when you're doing your spade test, you just want to dig a hole roughly as deep as the blade on your spade. And then once you get that done, you might need to kind of cut down along the side to make it a little easier to pop out. And then just pull the whole slice up. You want to get about a four inch thick slice of soil for your test. Okay, so I've got four different soils pulled up here. I'll start on the left. So this soil right here, um, this soil was tilled this spring and seeded down to oats with uh, alfalfa understory. So this is going into alfalfa. And second soil here, this is an established alfalfa stand. So this is in uh, third year alfalfa. This soil here is from a fence line. So just right next to the alfalfa field and then our soil on your right here is from a corn field you know also tilled this spring and planted and so all four of these are Fayette silt loam soils these samples are all taken within about 100 feet of each other so they're all the same soil type so a few things about doing a spade test um, the first thing easier to actually leave the soil on the spade when you do this I couldn't do that here, obviously, but the second thing, you can see here, when once you dig your hole, you're going to have a lot of smearing where you shoved your spade in. So what you want to do is just take a knife after you get your sample out and just kind of pick away the surface of this soil so you can get a better idea of the underlying you know, soil structure. Now... Hopefully you can see the color differences here. But this soil obviously is not in as good a condition as the other ones. Again, same soil types here. But obviously a lot of erosion has happened over the years on this soil. You know, we've only got maybe six inches of topsoil there, and then we're into clay. So very degraded condition here. This soil is pretty compacted. So I'll just uh, kind of chip this away here. Hopefully we can get a better look at the, the structure. So again, not too bad at the surface, but this was tilled you know, probably a month ago. But definitely some wheel compaction here where I pulled this. We don't have any roots here. So I took this in between the two corn rows. I didn't take it in the corn row. So then you might see some roots. But I just wanted to show the differences here between soils under different management. You know, see, another thing with tillage, you know, I'm only maybe three inches here, and I just pulled up another big chunk of clay there. So when you till your soil, you're mixing, you know, however deep your tillage is, you're mixing all that soil. So if you go into this, say, with a subsoiler, thinking you're going to break up compaction, you're gonna, all you're going to do in the long run is pull a bunch of this stuff up towards the surface and you can see that that's happened here and we've got clay mixed in with this topsoil so that's one of the disadvantages of doing tillage over time so as far as aggregation you know not very good here again it's it's pretty homogeneous because it's just been tilled there's some crumb structure there got pretty good moisture here today so you got to keep that in mind anytime you're looking at soil you know, it depends on your moisture conditions. This is crumbling fairly easily because we've got some decent moisture, but in general, you know, this is what I would call a pretty degraded soil. You see, we've had a lot of erosion over the years compared to this same soil taken maybe 30 feet away. So this is our fence line, you know, very healthy soil here. We've got roots all the way down to the bottom, you know, nice crumbly, you know, this is what we call a crumb structure. So if you're evaluating soil health, 
you know, a chrome structure, this is ideally, you know, what we want to see. There's several advantages to having the chrome structure. It's very good for water infiltration, for one. You know, the water can easily percolate down in between these, these soil pores here. And the second thing is, you know, oxygen exchange is very easy. And also, your root penetration through a soil like this, you can imagine, is substantially easier than through a soil like this. So this is, you know, basically just a, you know, gunky clay here. It's going to be pretty hard for roots to penetrate down through that. Water is not going to penetrate down through that, you know, very quickly at all. So your water infiltration in a soil like this is going to be much slower. So here we've got our established alfalfa, and we've got roots all the way down. This soil is in pretty good shape, I would say. You tense with alfalfa, especially over time. You know, you're making three or four cuttings a year, so there's a lot of wheel traffic. So you can tend to see some compaction up near the surface. Not too bad today. Again, we got pretty good soil moisture here. You know, got some earthworms there, so that's a good sign. Probably not as many here as I would like to see, but one's better than none, right? So pretty good crumb structure here as well. Again, we're looking at basically perennial vegetation across all three of these, whereas on your right there where the corn is put in this spring, you know, that's been tilled every year. So this is our newly established alfalfa stand this spring. Surprisingly good soil structure here. You know, we've got roots down just about all the way. You know, this was just seeded in uh, early April. You know, pretty good structure here, even though this was tilled this spring. So quite a bit of tillage to level this out before it was seeded. But, you know, this is the power of roots. You know, just within a few months, you know, they're penetrating down through that soil. They're starting to build soil structure there so that's kind of what you want to see Got another earthworm there so you know other things you can look at besides structure obviously is color you know dramatic color difference between these two obviously much more organic matter in this soil this one you can see i got down into a little clay down in there so topsoil wasn't as deep where i happened to dig that sample up a little bit deeper over here. You know, obviously, good color all the way down in this profile. Another thing you can look at is smell. So that might seem kind of odd, but you can actually use smell to assess biological activity in your soil. So a healthy soil should have a nice kind of earthy, pungent smell. You know, people describe it as. So you should be able to dig that up. And again, this going to depend on your moisture conditions. The more moist it is, the more biological activity you'll have, the more likely you are to be able to detect the different smells. Yeah, so that, that's a really good smell in soil there. If you don't smell anything, that's you know, that can happen. If you have dry conditions, you know, your biological activity kind of slows down. So not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, no smell at all generally indicates just kind of a lack of biological activity. Whereas if you have a, you know, a metallic smell or kind of an ammonia smell or rotten egg smell, that's not good. That means your soil has gone anaerobic. And so you can use smell as another indicator of soil health. See, this soil basically has no, really not much odor at all that I can detect. So that's just a quick uh, overview of doing the spade test and assessing for aggregation, color, smell. There's lots of other things you can do with the spade test as well. That's it for today. Uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, please check back next time, and I'll talk about how to use soil temperature as an indicator of soil health. See you next time.